Well, good evening, church family, and those of you from our community or wherever you may be joining us tonight. We're thrilled to have you join us for this time that we call Midweek Manna, this chance to pause here in the middle of the week and reflect on God's Word together. And we certainly appreciate you uh, joining us. We hope and trust your week has gone well to this point. Those of us in the Troy area, and I know other places uh, in our state and even throughout uh, our country, really, and particularly the eastern part of our country, this past weekend we're able to enjoy, at least temporarily anyway, a, a beauty of seeing some snowflakes fall from the sky. Unfortunately, in our Troy area, it did not stick, and again, our children and even us adults who sometimes enjoy the aspect of a snow day here are there. Um, a chance to see the snow actually stick on the ground. But it was still a sight to behold to see uh, for those of us here in Southeast Alabama that something we don't get to see very often, and that is from some real honest goodness snowflakes coming down from the sky and, and snow showers, you may say. And it was this particular Sunday anyway, this particular day, it was indeed a, a beautiful sight to witness and to see. And I know we talk about cold temperatures and hot temperatures. Everybody has a difference of opinion. I know many people more appreciate more of the, the warm temperatures and the warmer temperatures, at least in our area. Maybe not 100 degree temperatures. They prefer the spring, early summer temperatures versus the cold. And I understand that. Those in our, in our church family know I've gone on the record of really enjoying the cold weather more. And I, I still do enjoy the cold weather more you know, than the hot weather. And, and so you get difference of opinions as far as what you like and, and what you see from that aspect of it. But you know, all of us should appreciate the change of seasons and all of us should understand, at least from a spiritual perspective, that the change of seasons and even the rain and even, even the snow and the summer and the winter is part of a big, bigger picture and also a, a bigger promise from God. And here's what I mean. A lot of times when we think about and have talked about and referenced the rainbow, and we know uh, that the rainbow indeed is a, a symbol of, and a reminder of the promise and the covenant that God made with, with Noah, as we read about after the flood. But really, when you dig a little deeper, there's a little bit more to that promise and a little bit more to that covenant than, than just the rainbow that we look at in the sky from time to time. In fact, in Genesis chapter 8, after Noah indeed has come out of the ark, and really as, as we get in, in a text, God really beginning and initiate, initiating his covenant that he makes with Noah is after this flood, of course, and the earth is barren. It's kind of hard to imagine, hard to picture what, what it must have been like for Noah and his wife and his, and his sons and their wives coming out of this ark and having the animals, obviously, that were in the ark with them, but other than those beings, there not being any other being alive on the earth, and how barren it was, how, how strange that must have been for Noah. And so God makes this covenant with him, an assurance with him, I think, to reassure him of what's going to happen and what is to come. But in that covenant, he does give some things that is a promise that we still have today. Yes, the rainbow is included later on. But listen to the beginning of what God says here. Verse 20 of Genesis chapter 8. Then Noah built an altar to the Lord and took some of every clean animal and some of every clean bird and offered burnt offerings on the altar. And when the Lord smelled the pleasing aroma, the Lord said in his heart, I will never again curse the ground because of man. For the intention of men's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I ever again strike down every living, living creature as I have done. And in this verse, while the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night, shall not cease. So we're part of the covenant that God makes here with Noah. And really with all of us is that when we have the change of seasons as we do when we go as words here in verse 22 when we go from seed time to harvest from cold to heat from summer to winter 
even from day to night. All of those things that happen in a natural way, in a natural order. Yes, they should remind us of God being the creator and the, God being the great powerful creature that he is. And of course, the amazing thoughts that go with that along the lines of the fact that even the creator wants to have a relationship with us as we talk about from time to time. But it's also not just a reminder of God being the creator. It is a reminder of the promises that God makes and he continues to keep. The covenant that he made here with Noah. That as long as earth remains, as long as you may say as the earth keeps spinning, that there will be seed time and harvest. There will be cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night. These things that we get, those moments that we have, that even here in South Alabama when, when it's more warm than night most of the year, that those moments we get like we had this past week, and even as we are in the middle end right now, these colder temperatures, that yes, we some are bothered by it and some don't like it, but we put on the jackets and we go and we deal with it. But as we do so, let's also remember that this is a reminder that we can trust God, that he's keeping his word, that he's keeping his promises. You know, we talk a lot about trusting God, but I think it's important that we do that. It's important that we have these reminders that we can trust God. Because we are his children, and we're like all children, like my children, like all of you that have had children, even grandchildren. You know there's a process of trust that develops, that early on it seems like they trust you completely without any question. And then as they get older and they get into the teenage years, they begin to question whether or not they can really trust you, whether or not really the things that you say are true. And they say, well, how do you know that, or why is that the case? And they doubt that in some ways. And then they begin to realize and understand that we as human fathers are, are perfect. And there are things that we don't always know and things that we can't always do. And they, they learn that. But they still get the point of, of looking for us for advice. And even as you get older, looking and trusting things they say. And I think in a spiritual way, there's some similar aspects of that for us as children of God. Maybe it's the beginning stages of our spiritual growth. We have that same sense that we are trusting God completely. But maybe then we have some disappointments, as we talked about last week, that come along. That maybe make us question, all right, why can we trust God? How can I know that I can trust God and trust his word and know that this is best? And, and so we go through that stage as much like children naturally go through it. That maybe we wonder that and we struggle with that. And so I think it's good for all of us to be reminded, much like we need to be reminded from time to time that God does love us, just like we don't want tonight to have a day go by that we don't share with our spouse in some form or the other that we love them, or we don't share with our children in some form or the other that we love them. So we need to be reminded that God loves us. But I think we also need to be reminded that we can indeed trust this one that's called Jehovah. We can trust the Lord God Almighty. We can trust the Creator because there are things He said hundreds and thousands of years ago that still hold true today. And that this promise of God that He's made, this covenant that He's made and He made with Noah is still true. And all His promises are true. And so as we continue in this cold weather, and maybe as we have more snow and ice may possibly come our way, and of course, we want to be careful with that. But even as we get into the spring and even as we get into the summer, that we can always have those times and those seasons to be reminded that these seasons, much like the rainbow, can remind us and let us know that we can trust God. He keeps His word, He keeps His promises. And for that, we can always be thankful. Well, again, thank you for joining us again tonight. And as we said earlier, we do hope and trust your week is going well to this point. We are staying as warm as possible. And for those of us in, in Troy area and Southeast Alabama area, and those got potentially more uh, winter weather coming our way this weekend, so be safe and stay safe through that. And, and uh, we hope and pray that you do. For those of you in our church family, we're, so, we're thankful as always for you to join us 
tonight and look forward to joining us again this Sunday. For those of you that may be a guest of our Collinsdale Church family and even perhaps watching one of our recordings for the first time as you watch this video, we're thrilled to have you join us uh, for our midweek manna here tonight. And we encourage you and love to, for you to join us again. Perhaps you'd like to hear more about our church family at Collinsdale. We love to hear from you. We love to connect with you. You can call our church office and, and, and leave a message if need be or send us a message other ways, email, whatever the case may be on Facebook. Re please reach out to us. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to have an opportunity to share with you more about our church family here at Collegedale. And we also invite you to join us again for uh, our other uh, recordings that we have or even join us here in person. In fact, we invite everyone to join us for our worship this Sunday. Uh, we meet here in our auditorium, or I should say in our building for Bible classes for all ages at 9 a.m. We also will assemble for worship this Sunday morning at 10 a.m. We assemble here in our auditorium. We also have our worship streaming in our fellowship room down the hall for those who uh, deem it best is spread out perhaps a little bit more. And of course, with this Omicron variant going on, we are certainly understanding of those who deem it best to worship from home. And if you do deem it best to worship from home still, we will have our worship live stream also, of course, at 10 a.m. And we encourage you to join us for that. Again, we thank you for joining us tonight. And let's close tonight in prayer. God, you are so good to us, and we thank you for that. And as we do view and, and witness the change of seasons, well, not even the change of seasons, the change in our days, going from day to night, sometimes we overlook the fact that all of those things are not just a reminder of you being the creator, but a reminder of the great promises and the covenants that you make and the word that you keep. And a reminder to us that we can trust you and help us to trust you and that trust to be displayed and listening to you and doing the things you want us to do and desire us to do. And we confess to you, we, we don't do that all the time as we should. And we thank you for forgiving us and help us always strive to be people that, that trust and obey you and live that out in how we live our lives. Father, as we are here tonight, we're mindful of those that are they're going through hard times. We have so many we know that are, are battling the COVID, um, COVID virus right now and this variant. We, we pray that you will be with all of them, help them to recover well and recover quickly. Uh, we pray for those who have loved ones that are battling it. We pray for those who are battling other illnesses during this time, going through treatments, recovering from surgeries. We lift all of those to you. and We, we pray for your healing touch to, to be with them. And for you to wrap your arms around them. We do pray a special prayer for those in the medical field, the first responders, those in the front line in this battle with viruses. As we understand the hospitalization rate going up again, and we pray that you will be with them, go strengthen them, and watch over them. We also pray for the teachers in our church family and in our community that are also going through the battle with this as they. Uh, having to deal with it in so many different ways. We pray you'll strengthen them. We pray for all workers really everywhere that are having to battle things right now and pray that you'll strengthen them. And obviously we pray that things happen in such a way that this virus will ultimately go from a pandemic to an endemic. And we pray that things can get to whatever that new normal might be. We pray for you to work in a way for that to happen soon. And for you to give guidance to those making decisions as well during this time. Father, we, as always, also pray that you will be their leaders, that you will help them to make decisions that are that will help us as your people to live the kind of lives you desire us to live and always have the opportunities to share with others the good news about your son, Jesus. And we thank you for the gift of your son. And we know as we are reminded of the great promises that you keep, that we can always look to your Son and to the cross to know and be reminded that all of your promises are yes in Jesus. And we pray this in your Son's name. Amen.